Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer, back with another training video. Today, I'm going to talk to you operators out there that are running Google and Bing ad campaigns. And I want you to do this. I want you to go and check out how many negative keywords you have. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what negative keywords are, why they're important, and how just adding the right negative keywords can literally double the number of leads you get based on a certain amount of ad spend. So negative keywords, what are they? Well, <clears throat> keywords, if you remember from last week's video where I talked about the keyword broadness spectrum, keywords are um, words you put in your account. So a keyword could be like this. You're like, Mark, those are words. Those are keywords. No. So this could be one keyword. But your keyword could also just be that. So it could be one word or it could be five words. So those are all called keywords. And um, so definitely keep that in mind. So number one, keywords um, are the things you have in your account. And you can think of them as getting triggered or activated. And when a keyword gets triggered or activated, that means an ad gets shown. So if keywords cause an ad to be shown or, or you know, activated, well then a negative keyword does the opposite. It, it's telling Google, when you see this word in the search query, don't show my ad. So keywords, and by the way, equal show ad. I'm gonna abbreviate on these, negative keyword equals don't show ad. And for those of you out there who've done a little bit of Google Ads, you probably already know this stuff, but I like to start from the basics, the fundamentals for those of you who might be new to this. So very important to have lots and lots of different negative keywords. I often get asked, well, how many negative keywords should I have in my account? Really as many as as possible. Uh, just to give you an idea, on an average account I build for someone in the limo car service industry, they're gonna have anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 negative keywords when the account first starts. And then <clears throat> you should be adding new negative keywords every single week. And so you might ask, well, how do we do that? So when you click on keywords on the left-hand side in your Google Ads account or Bing Ads account, um, actually, I believe on Bing Ads, it's in the middle of the screen. But when you click on keywords, you're going to see there's an option to see search terms. So I want you to go ahead and do that. So click on keywords and then go into search terms and then select maybe the past week or past month, depending on how much you're spending. I want you to see several hundred. <clears throat> and search terms, those are the actual searches people made uh, could be, you know, depending on your campaign, it could be anywhere all over the world. So it's the actual search someone actually made. And um, many times they'll even show you the searches people made that didn't lead to a click on your ad. Um, but, but most of the time it's going to be searches where they search something in Google and then clicked on your ad. Well, why is this so valuable? It's kind of like you're seeing into the mind of your prospect and what they were thinking. And so it can give us a wealth of valuable data. And that's why the campaigns I build are so good right off the bat because I've just got millions and millions of search queries I've seen which enable me to build better accounts from the very get-go. But go ahead, check out your search term. They call it the search term report. And what you wanna do is you wanna go through that and you want to see the searches that aren't relevant to what it is you offer. And you want to make sure you make a negative keyword out of it. <clears throat> so let me give you an example. So let's say um, someone, I, I check out my search term report and so on search taxi to JFK from Queens. Okay. Well, um, so in the search term report, it actually lets you check 
this whole search query and then add it as a negative keyword. But that's actually not what you want to do. Because what that's going to do is it's going to make this the exact thing. So someone has to type this in exactly for uh, the search to be blocked. But we don't want that, do we, right? I mean, really, we don't want anyone who's searching for a taxi to see our ads, right? So what we wanna do is we still wanna click this button here, but we wanna edit it to just th be this. Just that. And with negative keywords, you don't have to worry about a plus or quotes. Um, so negative keywords work a little bit different as far as our match types. Um, so if you have taxi as a negative keyword, anytime that word comes up in the search query, then your ad won't be shown, right? If taxi is your negative keyword. However, if someone searched for some reason, I don't know why they would do this, but if they search taxis to JFK, well, that wouldn't be blocked because it has to be the exact word. So if you added taxis as well, then it would block your ad from being shown. But that's why it's always important to have lots of different variations. And so with negative keywords, there's only broad match and exact match, right? So if your negative keyword is taxi and someone searches taxi near me, your ad will still be shown, right? Because it's not exactly taxi. So really, for the most part, I don't use exact match um, negative keywords. I usually just use broad match negative keywords, which it's gonna look like this, right? And so now, if someone searches taxi near me, your ads won't show, which granted I could go into why your ads shouldn't show anyways because you shouldn't have taxi as a keyword in the first place, but I'm just trying to illustrate a point here. So your question now might be, well, what sort of, uh, how, how do I build my native keyword list? Because I highly, highly recommend, actually, if you're gonna start a Google or Bing ad campaign without any negative keywords, I guarantee you, you're gonna flush minimum, even if you build it, do a really good job building everything else, you're gonna flush a minimum of probably 40 to 50% of your budget down the drain, just straight away. And that's if you're using all of the right keywords, with the right um, keyword match types. That's how important native keywords are. In the last video I shot, I mentioned that really in any Google Ads campaign or Bing Ads campaign, 90% of your success will be in your keyword selection, keyword match type, and native keywords. That's it, 90%. If you can nail those three things, you will be way, way ahead of, of most people. <laughs> So in building this negative keyword list, you might be asking, uh, what sort of native keywords should we be using? And so um, I'm gonna just list them off. Number one is airport names codes that you do not service, right? Because these are negative keywords. So let's say someone searches, um, you know, SFO car service, right? They're in New York City, they're in Manhattan, okay? They're flying out to San Francisco, they need a car service. And there's a company in New York that has a Google Ads campaign running and their keyword is car service. Right? So follow me, the company in New York, the limo company, one of their keywords is car service. Now this business person who's flying out to San Francisco is looking for car service at SFO airport. So he just searches SFO car service. Well, because this company in New York has this keyword and they don't have SFO as a negative keyword, the ad is shown. And this business person, there's a very good chance he clicks on it because 
There, I might even say Manhattan car service, but you'll, you'd be surprised at how many times people don't read exactly what the ad says. They are looking, they might see car service and they're like, oh, Google would never show me the wrong results. Um, and so they click on the ad and they go to the page and maybe they call you even with, and still not realizing that you guys don't service people in San Francisco. Granted, that's a whole nother thing. I know a lot of you guys do worldwide service, so it's not like you tell them, no, we can't help you. However, ideally you're trying to find people um, for your vehicles, right? That's gonna be your highest profit margin. And so this company just wasted four, five, six dollars on that click because they didn't have SFO as a negative keyword. You're like, well, Mark, there's a lot of airport names and codes out there. I know, trust me, I know. And so what you wanna do is you really want to download the top, let's say 300 airports in the world, in the world, and get their airport codes, most common airport names, and you want to have just a massive airport name and code native keyword list. Because you get, I'm sure you guys know that every airport's a little different, what people call it, like Detroit Metro. People just call it Metro Airport. Um, you know, John F. Kennedy, they don't really say John F. Kennedy Airport, they say JFK. And so um, you want pretty much every airport name or code that you don't service to be on that list that you don't service. So for instance, this, this company, in New York who just screwed up, um, maybe they service, you know, Newark, um, LaGuardia, uh, you know, JFK. So they wouldn't want these ones on their negative keyword list. However, they would want pretty much every other airport that they don't service on their negative keyword list. They might not even want Philadelphia. What if someone searches car service JFK to Philadelphia or to PHL, I believe? Well, that is an airport that they travel to. So they wouldn't want that on their native keyword list. So number one, I want you guys that you're running Google Ads campaigns right now to go and download, you know, a list. You can find it. They're available online of airport names and codes and add those to your native keywords. <clears throat> number two, locations. I know my writing's a little funky. You don't service. Okay, so follow me on this one. Um, so let's say someone is in, um, this is just like the airport name and code one. So let's say someone is in, you know, New York and they're flying to Vegas. And so they search for uh, Las Vegas limos, you know, they're going, it's a bachelor party. They're in New York, they're flying to Vegas. So they search Las Vegas limo service. They want to rent a stretch limo for the bachelor party, right? And so this company in New York has the keyword, and this is a phrase match, which whether it's a phrase match or broad match modified, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch last week's video. Um, it's going to show up when someone searches Las Vegas limo service, right? This person's in New York City. And oftentimes, uh, I suggest having both types of keywords, a keyword with the location in it, but also the keyword without the location in it. Because someone in New York City, let's say they're in Queens, isn't going to search Queens limo service, right? Because they know, Google knows where I'm at. So they just search limo service. That's why I actually like having both types of keywords. Uh, so you'd have Queens limo service and limo service. However, this person uh, who's getting a stretch limo for his bachelor party, he searches Las Vegas limo service and there's a company that's nearby him that has the keyword limo service in their account. They don't have Las Vegas as a negative keyword. That sucks because that's gonna cost them a lot of money. Um, because if they don't have Las Vegas, they probably don't have a lot of other cities. And so you really want to add any location. Let's see if I can fix this a little bit. You really want to add any location that you don't service. 
So typically I do the top 500 cities worldwide because you have to remember a lot of people travel internationally so you don't want to just do cities in the US, you want to do cities worldwide. And, um, and you're still going to get irrelevant searches because there's just so many cities. You would have to have millions of negative keywords to cover every potential city there could be. However, if you have the top 500, top 1000, that's gonna cover 95 to 98%, okay? So we wanna make sure, um, so if you're a New York limo service company, pretty much within a 500 mile radius, maybe not adding any of those cities, but over a 500 mile radius, you want to add all of those as negative keywords. Now, if you do like charter buses, this gets tougher. This gets a lot tougher with the large vehicles because I work with companies that will go from San Francisco to Dallas. You know, charter bus from San Francisco to Dallas or charter bus from, let's say, Denver to Miami. So with those companies, this might not apply to you. But for, for most of you guys out there, you want to add locations that you don't service, airport names and codes you don't service. Now this one might be a little controversial. Competitors. But Mark, when someone searches for my competition, I want my ad to be above theirs. Typically you don't want to do this and here's why. When someone's looking for a particular company, they might be looking for that company because they've already booked with them and they just forgot their phone number and they need to update their reservation. That happens all the time. And there's lots of, of other reasons they might be calling this potential company um, that isn't looking for a quote, right? And so, and even if they are looking for a quote, sure, there's a chance you might convert them, but you have to ask yourself this. Would you rather put your ad in front of someone who's looking uh, for the type of service you offer but not any company in particular or would you prefer to put your ad in front of someone who's looking for your competition? You can only choose one. That's what I thought. You always want to put your ad in front of someone who doesn't have a brand in mind because if you can only choose one, sure, if you have unlimited budget, then that might be a strategy. I still don't think it's worth it personally. Google Ads is very expensive and you're going to get a ton of people that are searching for your competitor for a reason. Maybe they already booked with them or some, there's tons of reasons why they might be calling them. And so you're not going to convert many of those people. And so I'm not saying you can't. And a lot of times people will, will give me a reason. They'll tell me a story. They'll be like, well, there was this one time that he was calling for my competition, but I, 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 you know, I'm a great sales guy. I converted him, you know, educated him on us. Well, that's great. Okay. Um, just because you have an example of it happening successfully for you once doesn't mean you should base how you operate off of that fluke. Okay. So add your competitors. Now here's, here's, something else I should mention. Let's say your competitor is Joe, Joe's limo service. Okay. So we don't want to have Joe's limo service as the native keyword. We want to have Joe's with an apostrophe S. We want to have Joe's. We want to have Joe. I mean, we could even have Joey. <laughs> we could even do Joey's, you know? Um, my point is you want to have as many potential variations, even misspellings, as possible. So, you guys, if you, just three, these three things alone can save you, you know, 30, 40% or more a month. Um, so, common negatives. This one is the easiest one because. All right, what I want you guys to do, don't stop watching this video, but when this video is over with, just search for common negative keywords Google Ads or negative keywords Google Ads. And you're gonna see, uh, I believe there's one site I actually used to build my list myself. It's 1,500 of the most common negative keywords. And those are things like people looking for videos or, or you know, even reviews. Uh, so many different things that um, could be that are good potential native keywords. 
Um, you know, even bargain shoppers, cheap, cheapest, low cost, discount, low price. Um, you probably want to add those as well to eliminate as many tire kickers as possible. It's impossible to completely cut out tire kickers. Whenever you're in an industry where you can get pricing over the phone, you're going to get people that are price shopping. I hear this all the time as well. How do I eliminate price shoppers, tire kickers? I'm sick of it. Well, if you're sick of price shoppers, then I have some advice for you. Stop doing online advertising because when, when, whenever you have a product that can be shopped, and the thing is that, you know, if they're shopping you, they see no difference between you and the competition. That's why in your marketing materials and, and your website and, and everything you have, it's so important to try to separate yourself somehow from the competition, from something other than price. So um, use those common negatives. Now, lastly, uh, questions. Now this is something that I don't always do, it depends. If I'm working, let's say I'm working with someone who's in New York City, right? So could probably spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month or more on Google Ads if they wanted to, okay? I'm gonna add who, what, when, where, why, how. I'm not gonna write them all out. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, and there's lots of others. And the reason for that is oftentimes that's someone uh, like asking a question and could that be a good potential lead? Yes. So what I, one of the things I want you guys to get from this is the question isn't, is that a good potential, you know, phrase search someone could make. What you want to ask is, could that potentially be a bad search? That's a lot more important than could it be a, a good search? It's could it be a bad search? And here's why. Because typically there are going to be enough people searching for exactly what you offer, exactly where you offer it, to hit your budget every day. Now the only time this wouldn't apply is, let's say you're in some small, tiny city let's say like Biloxi or, or Topeka, Kansas or something, then you might not be able to do this because there might not be enough in, let's say you wanna spend $100 a day on ads in one of these small cities, excuse me, there's probably not gonna be enough people searching uh, in those small cities to really start cutting out people asking questions. But if you're in a large market and you have a small budget, then you want to just go crazy with negative keywords. And even if you think there's a small chance, uh, uh, you know, something maybe wouldn't be a negative keyword added anyways. But if you're in a small city, large budget, things change because you need to be a little broader, you know, so you're letting in people that might be asking a question because here's the thing. It's, Again, it goes back to that question. What are they searching for? Could it potentially be a bad search? And if it has any potential for being a bad search, it should be a negative keyword. Because oftentimes when people are building negative keyword lists, their question is, could this potentially be a good search? Wrong question. The question is, I'm actually, I love this. I'm actually gonna write this down. So. The question you should always ask yourself is, could this potentially be a bad search? Now, when I say bad, I should, I really mean irrelevant. I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. Could this potentially be an irrelevant search? Okay, like the other day, one of my assistant was trying to add is, and I'm like, oh, that's a tough one. But I knew it was for a client in a large market with a small budget, and I said, add it. Because how much is, or is this, you know, typically when you're using is, there's some sort of a, a question surrounding it. Uh, I just know there's enough good potential traffic, there's enough good potential people searching 
to you know not need that as a potential uh, you know as um, as a word that's accepted in the search query. So this is what you always want to ask yourself, could this potentially be a bad search? And if the answer is if yes, add it as a negative keyword. The question is not, could this be a good search? Because yes, you can always, it's, you can usually figure out a way to make something a good potential search, but that's not the right question. This is the question we should be asking. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone put it like that before, but um, definitely a good way to look at it. So negative keywords, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what, if you got all the way through the video and you watched this far, I'm going to give you the negative keyword list I use. And so I really appreciate you watching all of this video. Um, so just, um, just in the comments say, I saw it or no, no, say, I watched it. And if I see that, I will PM you with a link to the negative keyword list because I really appreciate you watching the whole video. Um, if you got some value from this, leave a comment. Uh, if you don't say I watched it, then um, I'm not gonna send you the negative keyword list, but if you've gotten this far, you should get it anyways, even if you're not gonna use it right now because this list could literally save you tens of thousands of dollars. So comment below, let me know how you guys like the video. If you would like me to elaborate on anything, I can always make another video. Um, you know, hit the like button, share it with your friends. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel and you guys have a great rest of your week.